last time there was some option in which yes, in which my video was also visible here in in this uh, screen but i don't know that time how that happened so it is okay we will start so i will uh, again introduce myself maybe some of uh, some of our joining on the, my first time this in this session so my name is ubaid tariq i am a pmrf scholar from iit kanpur i am taking the neptel live session of this course introduction to the prof introduction to professional scientific communication and this is week 3 assignment so i am not this is the week 3 assignment that we are doing now so uh, in uh, previous lectures we have uh, learned about hypothesis how to uh, frame the hypothesis uh, what are the important things that one should uh, adhere to or one should remember when uh, writing the research paper or any scientific writing and uh, my related to the paper uh, we uh, i taught you about how to write the abstract what are the contents of the abstract how you should write it and i have shown you some of uh, the tools also like uh, how to search the paper from pubmed uh, google scholar uh, bio render i have shown you how how many of you are joining first time in this or how many of you have missed the first uh, lecture you can raise your hand so all those who are uh, putting their hand up have uh, missed their first lecture in which i have show in intellectual i have shown some tools two people have missed that so i will give brief about those also so you will it will be helpful to you also so you can lower your hands now both of you. so <clears throat> first we will start with the typical structure of the paper whenever we publish the paper there are some uh, sections or uh, components in it Excuse that you should me, sir? yes yes Sir, week three assignment has to be submitted by fourteenth, no? Mm hmm. Okay. Fine. So all the all these guidelines and the notifications they are in the course uh, that notification section. You can check there all these things. So this is the typical structure of uh, the research paper. Uh, if you are here learning uh, how to write the different things, so you should be aware of all the things what are in the research paper. So I have given the this is the screenshot. So this is the title. So title uh, this is the list of authors and the affiliation of the authors is listed here. So here are some important dates when it was submitted, uh, when revised, then accepted. and all the dates when it was available online so here the journal is written and there are different uh, in some uh, journals but uh, this type of you can see different outline is here highlights abstracts graphical abstract is there keywords introduction material methods conclusion and declaration of interest or contribution statement acknowledgement all these things are important and you should uh, know uh, this so i will search uh, one paper for you so we will go to google scholar so always search uh, your papers in the google scholar if if you want to search uh, any person any researcher you can also search that person or you can directly search the papers like these are some of the papers that i have searched so for example i will search myself
so uh, if there are more persons with the same name so you will get different recommendations but i have frequently searched my name so i am getting this so the paper i showed you i am opening that so in the, you can you can open your google scholar account also if you have some published paper So these are all the sections in some uh, papers there is this highlight uh, maybe i have not told you about this highlight section in the in the lecture and in the lecture uh, content it is not there so some journals have every journal has its own guidelines uh, what what section should be there what is what should be the writing pattern what should be the referencing pattern everything is written in the journal guidelines for example the chemical engineering journal if we go into the chemical engineering journal So this is the chemical engineering impact factor is 15. Uh, all these things are written there. So if uh, we uh, click on this publish, there are submit your article, author guidelines, course. There are different op options. So gu guide uh, for the authors. So everything is written there. You can see the introduction, submission checklist. So these are the submission checklist. So what should be there? What should uh, be ready? What these things should be ready when you uh, submit the manuscript so before you begin everything is there and every time you submit any paper so in every any journal or you want to switch from one journal to another journal or sometimes your paper get rejected from one journal now you want to submit in another journal every time you have to revise your paper depend uh, according to the guidelines of the next journal so if you are submitting in this journal so you have to adhere to all the guidelines if you didn't adhere to all the guidelines it is my first if it is a major you have majorly missed all the guidelines that are uh, mentioned so sometimes your paper will be rejected by the editor only you have not adhered to the basic guidelines of structuring your art uh, research article according to the guidelines so this is all the things are there so wait uh, there may be so here is everything is written every bit by bit every word is written how to write so author contribution change of authorship authorship transfer copyrights everything is there so i will go to the this part introduction and when you in the writing part uh, yes so all other guidelines also their language english everything is there so you have to go to everything before you submitting the paper but but regarding the writing part what uh, you are writing so you should have before writing the paper you should have at least idea in which main main four to five journals i am going to submit that so you have to build it you have to build build your uh, things accordingly but it will be uh, it will be but you, should, you have to before writing you have to um, choose your target journals but it is same these things are most of the things in this writing session is same for every journal but there are a little bit of change like earlier in the abstract section i told you some of the journals they uh, need abstract just as a one paragraph and some of them have the guidelines that every uh, part of the uh, abstract like introduction uh, methodology discussion result they should be separate separate paragraphs so these are the by it is written that the how sub subdivisions uh, should be uh, made so subdivisions should be numbered like this in this paper in this if you are submitting here so introduction what is what you should write introduction what should you should write in the methodology how uh, how much you should Sir, with audio explanation is gone. audio has gone so maybe sometimes there is some network issue is it uh, fine now is it fine now audio hello Is audio fine now? Yes, sir, it's fine, sir. Okay. So if there is an issue, you can just uh, tell me. Huh? So I was here. So uh, everything is written there. Huh? So results, uh, they have made it clear everything. 
so what so this title author how to write the title how to uh, what what should be the format how to write the uh, names of the authors it uh, should we write the first name first and then last name or last name first everything is written why it is my these things uh, you will be different mostly these things uh, are different from paper to paper or journal to journal corresponding author um, you have, should you have to give the mail of every author and or only corresponding author their uh, present addresses or affiliations highlights abstract is might is written everything is written how sh should be the abstract there should be in this there should be a graphical abstract so graphical abstract it is just the whole overview or some schematic uh, schematic representation of all of your papers so you make some graphs or some pathways which gives the overall idea what what is in your paper so then keywords so today we will uh, talk about this uh, keywords uh, and title and methodology part in abbreviations and if ma uh, some journals they have the uh, policy that you have to write abbreviation like this if uh, that uh, word comes first time for example dna rna so first time you have to write the abbreviation and in bracket you have to write uh, First, you have to write the full first deoxyribonucleic acid, and then bracket uh, in bracket you have to write DNA. And uh, whenever that DNA RNA comes subsequently in the paper, then that time you can only write DNA RNA. And uh, some uh, have the policy that you have to give the some table or in which you have to write all the abbreviation. And this abbreviation it is very important. <clears throat> For example, uh, sometimes we miss some small things you you think that dna rna uh, everyone knows what is dna what is rna but uh, in abbreviations in every journal whenever you submit you have to write every abbreviation whether it is very much known for example dna rna everyone knows those you also have to write there because there should not be any confusion uh, regarding this because some uh, groups they have may have same uh, ma they they may have some their own, created their own abbreviations that may be resembling this dna rna fvd and ma, whatever they keep it but depending on their different molecules different uh, therapies they have made so every time if it is ma, it should not create the confusion between uh, the common things and the abbreviations that some some group have made there made their own abbreviation so it should be clear so acknowledgement in acknowledgement section so you have to acknowledge uh, everyone in in this section uh, those who are directly related to the paper and who are uh, whose work um, they have their obviously they have the contribution to the paper but uh, their com contribution is not that much that uh, they are given auth authorship but they have some contribution for example someone has given you the, some reagents chemicals or some uh, have helped uh, in writing the uh, paper or correcting the paper or checking the uh, proficiency or english language of the paper so those all those can be mentioned in ac acknowledgement but their contribution is not that much uh, so we can we cannot include them in the author we cannot give them the authorship so this is next acknowledgement source of funding if you have received any funding that is also mentioned everything you have to mention what are the funding sources how to write the funding so here everything my uh, format is there when the grant was received and when you have used it, everything is there so you have to write these so mathematical formulas footnotes are there submission and uh, there is uh, one another thing there is a con conflict of interest so references citations you may know about it one is the conflict of interest i don't know it is here or not conflict of interest why it is one section where everyone every author gives uh, uh, the their concern that there is there is no conflict of interest in this paper uh, everyone we have worked uh, um, uh, together and we don't have the any conflict that this is the first author this is the second author and we don't have any conflict uh, you have to mention that and uh, one thing is contribution my before uh, uh, conflict of interest and there is one section is contribution in which Uh, it is mentioned that what is the contribution of every author for example uh, in this paper there are four to five, uh, five six authors so author contribution is mentioned here you see that this is the author contribution so 
this is one author uh, what this one author has done what second author has done third author what what is the role of every author then this is the uh, this uh, uh, the con conflicting interest that i was saying that to give your consent so acknowledgement section these are these are supplementary information so here so you have to get the supplementary information for example you have some data that is not uh, uh that is extra data but uh, that's not in the flow because every paper has a limitation that they, they can only keep uh five figures or five figure panels uh, some have six figure panels so if you have data beyond that so you have to choose which data is more uh imp of importance so you have to keep that as a main data and uh other data which is in your uh, perspective which is not that much important you can keep in the supplementary that supplementary is also important because it will be here link it link to your paper there will be supplementary section in supplementary section can be downloaded by the readers and they can uh, read it so this is these are this is overall uh, what are the different things in the ap apart from the writing main writing part introduction methods results conclusion which uh, is uh, of more focus in this uh, uh, course but these are the extra parts that you should be aware of so uh, is this clear about uh, everything about the paper what is about the structure of paper so then we can move ahead anyone have any doubts or questions So if uh, there are no questions, we can uh, move ahead. So first thing is uh, when you start writing the paper. So uh, there are uh, even there are papers about how to write the research paper. So th this is one of the uh, paper which uh, is titled how to write the first research paper. So it is about writing the first research paper. So some of the important points which are in this uh, the paper this actually discusses seven rules that allow writers to prepare a well structured and comprehensive manuscript for the publication submission and th these are some of the important points that are mentioned in this paper these uh, this author which who have written this paper he has mentioned some of the important points uh, that one should consider so first point is create a regular time block uh, for writing so for example uh, when you start writing why it is very difficult to sit uh for too long uh, for five to six days from morning to evening to write it, it might be a little little boy but uh when uh, my what you should do or what is the appropriate way so of writing the first paper so whenever you are uh, doing your work simultaneously start writing some of the sections for example you start writing methodology while you are writing methodology in your notebook every detail but start writing uh simultaneously start writing methodology uh in in the paper format and then keep on adding, when you are getting results start writing those results and simultaneously create some time slots that for this one hour i will uh, write the some part of introduction i will uh, read some papers and write part of the introduction so you will keep on accumulating writing small small parts and it will be easy for you and while uh, you are doing experiments at the same time when you are writing so it gives one advantage so uh, when you are uh, writing at the same time so when you are compiling your data and uh, this is one section this is one section but uh, this gives the advantage that sometimes there are some things missing so in the meantime you will uh, get to know about these missing things and you will do the, these experiments but in in the cases when you write at the end so you you have done all the things you have randomly uh, made some outline that these things i need to do for the paper so i will do this at the end i will write the write the manuscript but when you at the end when you write the, all the things and compile all the things so sometimes you feel that this there should be one experiment which is missing here so that time you have to do do that but when you write at the same time and when doing experiments it is very helpful in both these aspects so create the de detailed outline and discuss it with the mentor and peers so uh, create the detailed outline take a paper and uh, write all the outline what what is the outline of the paper what what will be in the introduction what what will be the in the methodology what are what are the experiments subsections you write all of these and discuss with uh, with your colleagues and it will be helpful 
will when they will give your suggestions it will be very helpful because if you start writing uh, with yourself without discussing with anyone so this is mainly about the first research paper so uh, sometimes you write some unnecessary things so you write uh, some parts of the introduction that may not be needed but when you uh, write a detailed outline uh, all the subheadings in there so you 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 will follow that track only and it will be easy for you to write uh, and it it is well, there are less chances that you will unfollow that track and write some unnecessary things that that may not be needed uh, later. So it will be a waste of time. So uh, creating a deadline is very important. Be uh, meticulous and accurate in uh, describing the materials, materials and methods. So in materials and methods, you have to uh, mention the most of the detail, details that you have done, everything for in the experiment. Uh, so that actually the journals also want that you give the proper details of materials and methods but or the experiments you have done so that it will be replicated by other uh, groups so be clear concise and uh, be clear concise in describing your results so you don't have to drag it just be concise what you have found and then discuss it with in the discussion part correlate it with other things Present the principles, relationships, and generalizations in the concise and conveying tune. Revise your paper uh, through critical reading. Revise, uh, receive feedback, and revise again. So when you write all the parts, so take some uh, gap, take some rest, because when you continually write the paper, at the end uh, you didn't feel like I I am done now. I will I will not uh, read it two to four times. I have already. Uh, uh, I have already written it two to four times now. I will not, but this is very important. Writing or at the end, writing whole paper is very important. And you can give your paper to some of your friends and they can uh, check some of the uh, silly mistakes or some of the errors that are there. So it is very helpful to receive the feedback and revise it again. So uh, it is for when you finish the writing, take two to three days break. So your mind will be fresh. It will not be redundant. So, so then read it again. So you will may find some of the mistakes that that may need to be corrected so this is the proper way how to write your first research paper and other maybe it is true for other research papers also uh, second or third is whatever papers you are writing after that so uh, this is same uh, this is for those uh, who find difficulty in writing or uh, this is the easiest way to write uh, just start with the blank paper and write some of the important questions like uh what is uh, the topic of my paper uh, why is the topic important because all these things why it is important uh, what is my hypothesis uh, what are my results and make some figures that are in your results what are my major findings these are all the sections of the paper my in 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 your paper you have to answer all these questions so if you uh, write in that way answer your questions and uh, give you importance in yourself in your in, in your paper in your writing so it will be with the very great paper and uh, readers uh, will be attracted or interested uh, reading it so include the visuals figures tables all the things in your paper so this is overall outline so after uh, writing these questions this is the one level of outline second level of outline could be that uh, divide these questions in different sets for example introduction material methods results and uh, discussion conclusion so for example uh, here are some of the broad questions now you can further uh, elaborate this why is your research important so what is known about the topic uh, what is your hypothesis uh, what are your objectives all these things you write in uh, this uh, in this introduction so when you focus on these uh, things so you will be on the track and you will not write ex extra things so uh, importance of your research what is already known that it's very much important uh, writing uh, very much important before writing your hypothesis in, in the intro introduction section then the uh, materials and methods section so you have to write uh, what materials you have used you have to exactly write the what materials you have used from from which company you have purchased you have to write the catalog number of that so who is the subjects of your study so maybe you have done the survey in that case you don't have any materials that you have used maybe uh, in some types of research but uh, so then subjects you have what are the subjects uh, who have who are, who are involved in your study and maybe you have used different animals or 
whatever you have used so you have to write that in in, in detail you have to write it so then uh, what is the design of the study so every uh, experiment you have to write uh, that in in a, in a detail and every procedures that you have followed so in the result section uh, so uh, you have to choose what are the significant results so make the panel of the results so in in paper so you don't have to keep uh, one single single result so you have make some panels for example four to five panels of uh, that my, those uh, different results are compiled in a, in a one panel so you have to choose which which uh, result will go in of this panel and this panel so there should be there should be some interrelated relation between the two to three results so that they will go in one panel and other results will go in this set of panel and then you will describe it in the result section of this panel together so that is important and if you have some extra data uh, so you have to choose which one is uh, which one uh, i i should keep in the supporting section or supporting results then uh, in the discussion and conclusion you uh, you write about your major uh, findings and what is the significance and implication of your results and you will give some broader idea uh, about your work and broader implications of uh, your work so my is the same thing i told you the getting the getting the feedback during the early stage uh, when you draft your paper when you uh, start working getting or even you start writing so getting the feedback or discussing your i would find with the supervisor or seniors it is very important because it saves a lot of time i already told you that if you start writing and you write some different things that should not be included in the paper so that all the writing and time will be the way so then you have to write it again and it becomes frustrating sometimes so uh, so outline will help in this case so you have to make an effective outline uh, you have to make a broader uh, outline and first broader outline then in each uh, section of the outline you have to dig in deep and write all the things what should be in the paper and you have to communicate with uh, your uh, supervisor or your seniors and you also have to choose the journals that I already told you you have to choose the journals uh, don't choose one journal choose two or three or four journals so first i will mm -hmm. submit in this if it is not accepted in first so now you have that list ready with your if even if it is rejected uh, from the one journal though you do not have to think now in which journal i have to submit so you have already chosen the journal three to four list so first aim high impact factor journal uh, depending on your work what what you, what type of work you have done and how much work you have done according to that choose three to four journals and from your list first you target the high impact factor and then others if it is rejected So I already told you the this is the structure of uh, the scientific report or paper. So this is abstract. There's a title, abstract, introduction, uh, methods, results, and discussion. And in last lecture, I also told you why we should write methods first. And what my, this is the sequence of writing. First, we should write methods, the result, then the results, and then after that, introduction, discussion, uh, at the end, abstract, and after that uh, you have to write the title so i told you significance so in my method section you have the you have already done your experiment so it's easier to write the methods and you have already written that so it will be easy to write methods and on the basis of methods you write results that you already have then you do the literature survey and write the introduction part and uh, when you write the introduction part so introduction you will write introduction based on your methods and based on your results so you will give the significance you will cite the previous literature and then you will come up to the your hypothesis and objectives now you have done the literature survey in your introduction so this will help you to write the discussion because in the discussion you have to correlate your results with the previous study so it will be easy to write introduction because you have some idea because you have uh, for writing the introduction you have done some literature survey and written some introduction part and in discussion part some some points from the introduction uh, introduction can be written also if you see some you see, see some of the paper so in the discussion they also start with the this basic introduction uh, correlating with your results then at the end when you have overall idea what is final your manuscript then you will write the abstract and when abstract is uh, complete you will choose the title and 
title you can choose three to four titles that these these are titles that that can be given to this then you can discuss with your senior supervisor then you, you can choose one best title and uh, writing the title is very 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 much important so uh, here I have, um, uh, this one survey is shown that the title has the highest readership for example 100 percent of the people when people go and search in the papers related to any topic for example in pubmed or google scholar or simple the google search so first they will uh, only uh, look look for they will only read the title so they will read different titles and on the base of different titles then they will open some of the interesting which some of the titles will which will be interesting and related to that those that uh, the work so they will now open that now first thing what we will the uh, reader will do it the reader will read the abstract first so from 100 percent those who read the title only 20 percent uh, read the abstract uh, for if you have paper mind it, it it comes in the google search every time for example in 100 times so only 20 percent times mostly the people read the abstract and then uh, five percent uh, uh, if they found this paper interesting, abstract, and relevant to their uh, work, so they will uh, read it. So less than five percent will uh, read the whole paper. So uh, there is a very, there is very much importance of the title. It should be very attractive. It should be concise. So a uh, good title brings the visibility of the paper. If you have written the good and attractive title, and uh, you, 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 your people will get a great visibility. If you get a great visibility, there are chances of you will get the more citations. People will cite your work, people will use your work and cite your work. So uh, that's why title is written at the end. So you have whole idea of the main script. Now you can uh, write a good title. So uh, why title is important? Because title is usually the first introduction uh, to the readers or reviewers about your work. So therefore, you select a title and that grabs attention, accurately describes the content of your main manuscript and makes people want to read it further. So it should be very, very much attractive. Anyway. So an effective title should uh, convey the main topics of the study, highlight the importance of the research, be concise and attract the reader. So these are the important things that should be there in the title. So uh, writing a good title is challenging. First list the topics that are covered uh, by the manuscript so what i already told you so you should uh, you should know all the topics that are in the manuscript and they put them together and uh, for example uh, different different things main things that are in that are in your uh, paper so some in, for example some disease some drug uh, or some disease model or some different approach or some drug delivery system uh, you have to focus that these main main things the disease the drug the drug delivery system they uh, their names should be in the title their names should be written in the title so that uh, it will be more specific readers will go and read uh, the paper so while it is important to be short and concise uh, you do not want to overstretch or uh, incorrect it should be exactly what uh, you did in the study for example if you uh, it should you should not write some extra in the title you should not claim something extra in the title and uh, then in the in the whole study it is not exactly uh, what you have done in the study therefore it it, it will be not a great uh, title and it will as i think uh, my reviewers and uh, editor it will not also accept it because of your title so you have you have to be more uh, accurate in, in in your title so how to write the good title uh, there are uh, so in title should have the best possible words that describes the content of the paper avoid unnecessary words like study on or investigation on so because you have to keep it concise you don't have you have to minimize the linking words so you have to directly uh, uh, write uh, which should be some in in some low end but you should, should give the proper message so avoid abbreviations so no abbreviations never you have to write abbreviations in the title and uh, use specific terms rather than uh, general terms so, because title is specific and it directly gives the uh, idea what you have done so uh, some of some of the examples of the title for example rep recommended human antithrobin third so this is not a good title and does not tell the readers much about the paper but instead if uh, the, this title was written as expression of 
biologically active human antithrombin third by a recombinant uh, baculovirus in Suporo, Suporotidra, uh, Firigopedia cells tells the readers what um, uh, if you write in uh, here you can uh, see that this human antithrombin third is also written this recombinant uh, virus which is baculovirus it is written there then this species of mite is also written these cells are also written there so everything is there uh, which is important so expression is also there that means it is expressed uh, this antithrombin is expressed here so all these things are important so ma this is second example of title so on the discovery of the useful new laboratory research methods for isolating in film ma this is very much lengthy so so they have ma written just like a paragraph ma this cannot be the title so this some of the example studies on the snake ma is again too brief ma what snake wire what kind of studies are done ma everything ma it should be mentioned in the title it should not be too Uh, lengthy and not too short. Or is everyone following what I am saying? If you have any questions, you can just interrupt me and ask me. So ask you uh, ask yourself these uh, questions and make note of uh, your answers. For example, uh, when uh, you are writing the title. of the paper so now you have to think uh, how i should write what the things uh, i should put in in my title so you have to ask so some of the questions like what is my paper about so some examples are given that my paper studies the x whether x therapy improves cognitive function of patients suffering from dementia so this is what your paper is about so what techniques you have uh, de- used or designed uh, you have used in your paper so i was it was a randomized trial so who or what is studied so i studied 40 cases from 60s of japan so there are some of the words for x therapy it is important cognitive function is important dementia you are working on dementia so you have done the randomized trial so you have studied 40 cases in in japan 60s of japan so these are important things and all these important things uh, that are in your main script they should be uh, they should be written in the title so they should these words should be present in the title so you have to list some of these words for writing the title you have to list some of these words for example these are the words x therapy randomized trial dementia six japanese studies for tick cases improved cognitive function so these are the words that you have cho- chosen from overall uh, from your study now uh, you have you have to create the sentence uh, using these words so all these words should be in the sentence for example this study is a randomized trial that investigates whether x therapy improved cognitive function uh, in 40 dementia patients from 60s in japan it uh, it uh, reports improved cognitive function and now this Ma, ma, this is in the shape of title, and all the words are there, but it's too lengthy. Current uh, word limit is forty-eight, and it looks like a paragraph. But ma, you have seen the different uh, papers, but the, um, the titles are not that much lengthy. So what you have to uh, you have to narrow it down. For example, delete some unnecessary and uh, rep- uh, repetitive words, and uh, link the remaining. So this study is. so you have to remove it is run you directly start from randomized trial you have to start investigation these things because it is uh, understood that you are studying this you are investigating this and uh, we have reported that and it has improved that you have to uh, these reported report you have to remove these because these these are uh, self understood for example these unnecessary words are removed So now, how it becomes a randomized trial of X therapy for improving the cognitive cognitive function in 40 dementia patients uh, from 60s in Japan. So this one is also giving the exact message uh, as uh, compared to the, the, the one that is lengthier. So this is somewhat better. Word limit is 18 words. Now delete some more non-essential information. 
reward uh, the titles for example randomized trial of randomized trial of x therapy uh, you have to remove this then it will become like this from this you have to remove some more words like of uh, for him some words you have to cut a randomized trial of x therapy for improving cognitive function in 40 dementia patients so if it's not specific for job japan because uh, you have done this uh, 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 in uh, in your paper, might it mentioned that you have done your study in the Japan 60s in 40 patients, but the all your results that you have found, uh, that uh, they they can be uh, generalized because uh, this X therapy it improves the cognitive function. So you thought that it improves the cognitive cognitive function at anywhere in uh, it in every uh, for example Homo sapiens every human. So you don't have to be concise in the Japan, but you have the limitation you have done your study in japan that you can list in the methodology section you can write there uh, we have done in japan but here is no need to write this but if it is important so that you can write this write this japan but here i think it is not important so you have to choose when you are writing the paper so randomized trial of x therapy for improving the cognitive function in 40 dementia patients so it is word uh, length is 13 words and is the finalized title <clears throat> so so uh, you can write this like this or you can write it like this uh, some in another way for example x therapy improves the cognitive function in 40 dementia patients uh, uh, in 40 dementia patients mm -hmm. uh, randomized trial right. you can write it like this also So some of the examples are um, uh, there. Uh, so these examples will help you to because in in, in title uh, we cannot tell you you have to do this you have to do this. So but uh, giving the examples will uh, really help you how to write the title. So you then after that you you will correlate with your uh, studies or your papers. So this example is thus does vaccinating children and adolescents with uh, inactivated influenza wise inhibit the spread of influenza in uh, unimmunized residents of rural communities. So this is the question uh, this title uh, this is the title so this title is too many unnecessary words and is too much lengthy. So you can uh, now narrow it down influenza vaccination in children and randomized trial. So but uh, this title doesn't give the enough information so you have concise in in, in there is no audio sir okay wait maybe sir, uh, audio is there the okay. problem is with them i think sir, sir. Uh, so in between there is was, was there any audio interruption when i was talking before one minute no, 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 sir. No, sir. Uh -huh. No. Maybe uh, who who was asking it? Maybe it may be because they have poor network connection, and sometimes it uh, becomes like this. So, uh, in in this uh, session, as compared to last two sessions, but this is less interactive uh, because uh, there are things that I am directly telling you. But if you have anything, you can just uh, ask me in between or at the end. No. Is it fine uh, until now? Yes, you can speak. Yes, sir. It's fine, sir. Okay, okay. So how here you have cut it down or you have uh, make it concise, but it, but it, you don't have to make it too concise that uh, it does not give the full information. I, I, I already told you the title should give all the information over the paper and at the same time it should be concise also. Uh, now uh, you can write in it in this way also. Effect of uh, child influenza vaccination on uh, infection rates in rural communities are a randomized trial. This is in effect your title. It is short, easy to understand and convey the important aspects of the research. So and this is better as compared to others. So what are the tips? Uh, write down a few possible titles and then select the best to uh, refine further. Ask your colleagues their opinion. Spend the time uh, needed to do uh, this will result in a better title. So in title you have to just uh, 
ask you some more time ask your seniors ask opinions of others maybe you can ask some friends who don't have much knowledge about your field but ask them is it making some sense or not because they will think in the different perspective they will try to understand from this but those who don't know you are researcher uh, so you can ask those so it will be very helpful so spend some time in writing the title because it has a lot of uh, readership uh, titles have a lot of readership so it, if title is good so your uh, readership and your citations in the paper will increase so there are some of the papers uh, which are about just the uh, title writing and some of the uh, some of them have done some literature surveys or some have written review articles relating how writing a good title will help so this is one of the paper that you can read from this site so these are articles with short titles describing the results are cited more often so more often so what i was i was telling you in earlier examples that giving a good title that is concise that not too much lengthy and it's given the all, all all the information is there so there these papers are more cited so in this uh, in this uh, this is just the research, this is not the review this is the research because they have they have done sur some survey for example they have chosen uh, 423 uh, research articles that were published from october 2008 uh, and they have analyzed it in uh, december 2011 so now on the base of uh, all these articles that were published in in this uh, i think journal some journals they have mentioned that so they have analyzed all these 2423 articles and they have checked uh, analyzed the title of all these 423 and then they uh, come to the conclusion that articles uh, with results describing titles were cited more often than those with method describing titles for example some my uh, it is up to you but uh, what things you will give a priority uh, if you are giving something a prior priority for example method or uh, result or something like that so you have to those things or those results which you you are giving the prior priority after your experiments you will try to keep those in your title so it is uh, conclusion is that those who have given the result based titles and have written more result oriented titles they are more cited and some of uh, another is that uh, shorter titled articles have higher waving in citation rates as compared with longer titles so they have also analyzed these titles containing question marks containing uh, a reference or a specific geographical region and that used uh, a colon or hyphen while associated with lower number of citations so those who have uh, done some question mark uh, or some specific uh, mention some specific geographical region like uh, here uh, in this uh, they the authors can also mention the six cities of japan or only they can mention the japan so because of writing the japan even if it is even if it is the uh, these result the results they can be used anywhere in the world and they are true for every uh, individual whether it is indian or american but if they write in the Jap japan in the title so most of the readers they uh, will feel that it is something specific to japan and they will not open this paper so all these things you you have to keep in the mind and and my quality of your work and uh, not all the times but mostly the quality of your work or quality of your research is dependent on the readership and citations which you have got in your uh, paper what you have written so it is very much but these small small things you you can see the how much these small things matter but just removing the word japan even though they have done in japan but these can be used these studies everywhere in the world i think by removing the japan lot of readership will increase i think most of the readers they will see something related to japan i will not read this paper so i i'm i'm searching for general papers so these are very much important after uh, so 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 there are some analysis only a lower number of uh, characters and title topology uh, remained as a predictor of number of citation some further article titles can uh, help predict well, they have done some conclusion overall so 
Uh, this is the overall what the results are there in this. So you can just go and read this paper if you are interested. So another uh, paper is that the impact of article title on citation hits in analysis of general and uh, special medical journals. So here they have chosen some of 25 most cited articles and 25 least cited articles published in 2020. 2005. In 2005, they have chosen 25, which are more cited in. They are published in 25, and then they are more cited in uh, some of the articles that are published in 2005. There are least cited, so and then they have made the analysis. So result is like that. The number of citations was positively correlated with the length of title, uh, the presence of a colon in a title, and the presence of an acronym. Uh, factors that predict poor citation include references to specify the country in the title. So this uh, is correct in this paper also. In my this is the research paper they have done. They have done some research uh, effect of title on citation hits or impact of title on citation hits. So what I was telling you that presence of a colon when you increase the length of the title in the co the citations uh, uh, decrease significantly and uh, writing the specific country or something specific it is uh, mostly the country it is specific it is decreasing the citations so after title uh, there are keywords that are of uh, very much importance uh, for example this is the title this is one of the example of the title and uh, uh, you know that the keywords are also given. So this title, so uh, different search engines, for example, PubMed, Google Scholar, uh, when you search the article, they they do not search whole the manuscript. They do not give you the article depending on the whole manuscript. For example, if some uh, thing uh, like uh, seizure or uh, dementia, for example, if dementia is mentioned in this uh, paper but is not mentioned in the title so or in it is not mentioned in the keywords so if you search the in your search you will search something related to dementia this paper will not uh, be in your search list because the the dementia it is not in the title and it's not in the keywords so keywords and title is very important so so keywords are important words or uh, concepts found in your research paper or thesis an easy way to choose the important uh, so these are important and uh, you have to choose the re relevant words that are related to your paper and you don't have to uh, choose those words that you have mentioned in the title because this title and uh, these keywords they both are used uh, by the search engines so if there is some there are some words for example uh, Leptin signaling, uh, polyglycosine, uh, something, yeah, scissors is the mouse model, or uh, Lephora disease. So these are already mentioned in uh, your uh, title. So when you, when, when, a, when a reader searches this, so on the basis of this, he will get these. But now when you are in, including these keywords, you have to choose some different keywords because if when you write some more words related to your uh, related to your uh, paper and which are extra from these uh, extra from the title so it will help getting the broad uh, readership so for example there are some uh, keywords like leptin polyglycosine or caesar or lafora disease these are also these are or uh, these are some keywords which are mentioned in this paper so you don't have to use uh, these are not the good keywords to be used because they are already in your title you don't know you need to add these keywords because they are already there in the search engines you uh, on the basis of these uh, keywords you will this paper will be there in the in the search but you have to use some extra words maybe and definitely there will be a lot of words that are specific to your paper for example here in uh, related to this paper there's a epilepsy and glycogen metabolism protein phosphate uh, phosphatase these are some of the important keywords that are used in this paper so you can you have to choose these uh, keywords 
So in 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 the earlier slide, I have shown like here you have used some of the answers to the question, uh, some of the list, some of you have list some of the words. So here you have to choose, for example, six, seven, or ten words you choose that are important for your paper. And now from these, some of more important you can choose for the title and some missing uh, which are not fitted in the title or which are not in the title and some others you can choose as a keyword. So this is the best way to do it. So this uh, so this is one of the example of uh, manuscript title and what are the better keywords and what are the pure uh, poor keywords. So this is the manuscript title, region specific neurological uh, degeneration after okadic acid administration. So this is the title. So if you choose the words like this, neuron, brain, okadic acid and abbreviation because abbreviation should not be there in uh, the neither the title and neither the keywords original specific neuronal degradation signaling these are all there for neuronal degradation is there signaling is signal is a common word it should not be included in the title because signaling signaling is important what signaling it it should be mentioned there and neuron brain these are too much uh are too much generalized the neuron brain is too much generalized so you have to use some specific or better it uh, these keywords for example uh, neurodegenerative disease or CA1 region, hippocampal or uh, okadic acid, uh, neurotoxins. But here is written okadic acid, but you can uh, you, you you can uh, you cannot consider this. It is better to don't write those uh, keywords which are there in the uh, title. Uh, these which are there in the title. Map kinase cinema. This is very good. For example, you have worked on map kinase, but you cannot include that in the title so map kinase signaling cell death so these are some of the good uh, keywords for the above this title so now we will uh, move to the method section so before moving to the method section uh, have any one of you any questions regarding the title so we have talked too much about title because title is very 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 much important just give me a minute i will uh, have some water. Any questions from you? So if there are no questions, we will move ahead. So the methodology section. So we'll uh, talk about this. So uh, the method section, as you already know, the method section describes the action uh, taken to investigate a research problem. For example, what are the things you have done? So what are the techniques you have used, uh, different processes, how you have analyzed your results, all these things you have to uh, write uh, there. So the method section de describes the actions to be taken to investigate a research problem and the rationale uh, for application of specific procedures or techniques uh, used to identify select process and analyze the information applied to understanding the problem uh, thereby allowing readers to critically evaluate the st uh, studies overall validity and reliability so when you uh, write everything in detail in the methodology section so uh, the uh, validity and uh, reliability of your study can be evaluated because when you write clearly and after seeing your results and when you write it clearly how you have got these as how you have done this experiment it, it will be easy to evaluate uh, 
it's very critical and it's easy to evaluate uh, your the reliability of your study so methodology section uh, of the research paper answers two main questions how was data collected or gen generated how was it analyzed so two, two important questions how you have planned your experiment how you have done it uh, then how data was taken generated and then how it was analyzed so even the different softwares or uh, different things that you have used uh, for example in uh, drawing your figures and schematics that you um, you have to mention those also so the writing should be direct and precise and always written in the past tense past tense so this is very much important because you have to write in such a way you have to write in such a way that you have done this thing because method you will write only after doing this so you have to write in the past tense. so this is very much important so why method section in the research paper why it is important the method section should be in the research paper the experiment could be repeated by others to evaluate whether the results are reproducible or not so you have to write it properly so that others can follow your method and uh, check whether they are reproducible or something like that the audience can judge whether the results uh, and the conclusions are valid so methodology section is very much important on the basis of that only the validity and uh, of your results and it, it can be judged for example i will if i will give some example for we have used some image uh, in some image some for example image of any tissue or image of any cell you have used in your paper so when you use that image so yes the readers or the reviewer or whatever uh, the person who sees that he will look that this this is the image so you have shown some some things in the image like cells or or something tissue is in the proper state my tissue architecture is good uh, after seeing the image ma, it should be written how it was taken for example in, you can directly take an image from simple microscope like bright field microscope and you can take a some high-end microscope that gives the good resolution and for example confocal microscope if there if you have any type of fluorescence or staining you have done so but you cannot but you you cannot uh, for example uh, you have done some simple image and you can write in the methodology that i have used this confocal microscope so in that case validity will not be there or you have taken some uh, good image you have taken some maybe some confocal image but in result in methodology at uh, method session you are mentioning the name of the microscope well uh, this microscope i use and this uh, and uh, the reviewer they know that from that microscope it is not uh, feasible to take this quality image or this type of image so overall it can be used to validate uh, your results uh, this is one of the example there are a lot of examples that can be used to validate for another examples for you are doing pcr so when you do the PCR, so you, when you do the uh, when you report that in, in 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 your paper, so you have to mention in the method how I have done that, what instrument I have used to run the thermocycler, I have used to run my what reagents I have used from which company I have purchased that. So uh, when you mention all of these things, the reviewers and editor they know that this PCR, this have this specifications must. My, these my specifications and this antibody will give this type of stain and this type of my results if you are doing something wrong and my, that uh, because of your results what you have because of your method what you have written the method my, your results can be judged because people know if you follow this method because people have the experience the reverse and they have the experience if you follow this method you will give my, this level of results so this is very much important So how to write a method section uh, of a research paper. So some of the points, uh, how to write it. So we will go point to point. So first point is describing the material. First we will start with describing the materials using the studies, describing all the materials, whatever things, it should be chemicals, it will be the chemicals, antibodies, animal cells, which you have used. So all these you have to mention, for example, subject, species, uh, reagents, chemicals, all things. If you are using some subjects, so you have to mention the species, strain. If you are using some bacteria, you have to mention the strain. All the things you have to be clear and concise. 
and uh, uh, this uh, subject if you are uh, you using any subject or species you have to mention a demographic you have to mention all the things but specifically if you use a demography about this age of your subjects sex what was the sex of the subject and all the things and uh, eth ethical and bio safety considerations also with there whatever if you are doing any uh, uh, thing uh, which has some um, ethical concerns so you have to take uh, uh, you have to take uh, approvals for that for there are some of the agencies so ethical guidelines for biomedical research on the humans so uh, it is uh, managed by indian council of medical research icmr so you have to take if you are doing anything on the human patients you have to take approval from icmr uh, to uh, for, for the ethical criteria, so you are doing this type of study, and all the things should be mentioned in clearly in the approval. So you have to do only those things which are mentioned in the approval, which you have seeked approval for. So another is uh, if you are doing some experiments in the uh, on animals, so committee for the purpose of for the purpose and for the purpose of control and supervision of experiments on animals cpcsea so this is the one of the committees maintained by minister of environment forest and uh, climate change so uh, uh, on the on the base of this com com led by this committee that is the one committee in every institute that is iac institutional animal ethics committee so which is headed by this so that animal ethics committee, you, if you want to do any experiment on the animals, you have to submit your proposal to industrial institute animal ethics committee. In that committee, there may be some veterinary, from the veterinary uh, person, that may be some researchers and overall uh, human rights person will be there. There are a lot of human and animal rights person will be there. So all uh, these uh, persons then decide in in the committee that you should should you be given the approval to conduct this study or not. So all the approvals before doing any study you have to uh, seek the approvals from the agencies and Indian biosafety uh, rules and regulations is department of biotechnology if uh, you have any biosafety concerns with your chemical or some uh, some biological molecule so you have to take biosafety uh, you have to follow the biosafety rules and you have to take uh, this biosafety uh, committee you have to take approval from the institutional biosafety committee is also there in every institute so this was the first thing second thing is explaining uh, how the materials were prepared well, I, I was talking about these so in your method section you have to mention it so if you are using the animals so you, you will mention all these things a sex demography species and same time you will mention that uh, i have taken the approval from animal this committee and this is the uh, approval number so with approval number you have to mention all these things or human so, uh, this ethics whatever the ethics committee you are taking approval for so second thing is explaining how the materials were prepared uh, so now you have uh, preparing some of the materials for your experiments so you have to mention exactly how you have prepared these materials so you cannot use the uh, these uh, uh, you have to use the generic names or uh, for, for the drugs you cannot use the brand names for example if you are Purging some drug or chemical, so you have to use generic names, actual uh, chemical names of those, so that uh, uh, so that uh, anyone from any other country or any other place of the world you can get an idea what exactly you have used. So, if you are using any drug and you have done any modification in that, or if you done some novel thing in that, or if you are using some protocol that is already there, but you have done some novelty or modification that you also have to mention. So. I have used this one, but I have done something different in this. So the different thing you have done that is that needs to be specifically mentioned in in, in your paper. Describing the research protocol. So after that, you will describe the research pro protocol, how you have uh, done your experiments, so exact sequence of how the procedures were executed, exactly sequence. What are the different parameters that you have? Different parameters, maybe temperature, time, uh, shaking, whatever the thing you have, different parameters that you use, you have to mention them exactly. And uh, uh, for example, uh, this is one of the examples that bacteria were palliated uh, by centrifugation to isolate T cells, lymphocytes, uh, lymph nodes were collected. So this is not a much, this is not easily understood if you read it. So you will get an idea, but you need. 
you know that the centrifugation was done to pellet the, down the bacteria, but ex but this cannot be written. You have to write exactly what was the centrifugation speed, what was the time, what was the temperature at the time of centrifugation. Like this bacteria was, and you have to write in the past tense. I already told you uh, writing in a past tense is very important. Like here. So bacteria were uh, pelleted by centrifugation at uh, 3000 G uh, for 15 minutes at 25. This is the correct sentence. So everything is mentioned, the temperature, the time, and the speed of the centrifugation is mentioned. Or when this line is uh, to isolate T cells, um, uh, stainal and uh, mesentric lymph nodes from bulb sea mice were collected at day seven after immunization and with the oil albumin. So uh, everything, every information uh, from where you have collected these leaf nodes, at what time you have collected these leaf nodes. So before then, you before the collecting, you have done some immunization. So everything you have to mention uh, in in this methodology. So now the fourth point explaining uh, how measurements were made and what calculations were performed. So now you describe the protocol so you now you have to describe if you have done some of the measurements some of the calculations if you use some of the equations so you have to mention there too uh, after doing this experiment so the results when you got the results for absorbance or something else whatever the results you have got now you, uh, when you plot these results or when you show them um, in a proper way so sometimes you may have to uh, do some of the calculations for example in the excel sheet or you may have to draw some of standard curves to describe that properly all the things you have to mention so what type of calculations you have done if either you have used some of the equation for some simple equations for so you have to mention that describe uh, description of the measurement uh, instrument should be included by the manufacturer and the model so if you are using some of the instruments uh, for measuring these or for calculating these or uh, in, in your protocol if there are some instruments so you have to mention that you have to mention the model number you have to mention the calibration procedure if you have calibrated it before your experiment you have to mention that also you don't have to mention only the measurement step you have to, if you are there are some requirements of calibration before so you have to mention that also it was calibrated like this 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 and how measurements were by, by made uh, you have to mention all these things so the uh, fifth point is uh, stating which statistical tests you were done to analyze the data so when you plot the data so to to show that your data is significant or there is a significant change in uh, after you have done some uh, treatments or some procedures so um, for that you have done some statistical analysis so which statistical tests you have done though all the things should be mentioned and for every experiment and every graph you have to mention these these statistical tests so some of the another important points which are taken from the springer regarding the material method section this section provides the readers with all the details of how you conduct your study uh, uh, you should now what you should do you should use subheadings to separate different methodologies for example you have done five to six experiments or maybe more than that uh, to prove your hypothesis so you have to use sub subheadings in the, in the material method section so one subheading may be for example materials then different experiments different that you have done and describe uh, describe uh, what you, you what whatever you write you have to describe in the past tense describe new methods in enough detail that another is being reproduced i already told you you have to mention enough enough detail so that it can be reproduced reproduced by another group so if there are some established methods which are already known for example some of the methods you have taken from another journal another paper so or you are earlier using that method in your lab or it's very well known method so you have to describe it briefly and you have to cite that paper for example, you have taken from your lab paper or some other paper so so you can say that this procedure was taken from this but briefly still you have to write it briefly 
but you cannot only say that it is taken from that and mention nothing because if you mention nothing just cite that this myth method was done using that paper so the reader will be annoyed because you have to you have to the reader have to go to that paper to exactly to just read what uh, what is that method but it is advisable to give some brief write it briefly for example you write it briefly if uh, a reader found it interesting so he understood but you have to write in such a book that it should be understood what you have done but if um, author my reader wants to read it much more uh, in a detailed manner so he can go to that reference and uh, check from that previous paper so uh, you have to state all the uh, statistical tests and parameters that are already told you have to do that so uh, writing uh, your uh, methods and material section so if you are writing from for example you are using some biomolecules or this biomolecules were isolated from cells and it was isolated from tissues and this tissue was isolated from animals so you start writing with the animal so for example i have used this right uh, you have you write the strain of the for example, sd right and then then this tissue you have to write the name of the tissue was isolated uh, from the right using the surgical procedure and from this tissue the cells were isolated then from the cells this this method was used to isolate this biomolecule so you have to grow from this in in this you can so reagent cell sources assays statistics so all all the things can be uh, for the, uh, written in this way for the population demography questionnaires tests all the things so narrating the steps uh, followed in a chronological order for example sample source first there's a maybe the population what maybe the sample source then demography so you can steps of processing what are the controls or what how it was documented how it was analyzed everything is written should be written in the material method section some of the examples of material methods are as follows for example material method section is only section in the research paper in which passive voice uh, predominantly overrides uh, the use of active voice so these are some of the examples how to write uh, the material method section how to write the sentences exactly because in the past tense i already told you so oh, this is the one way we developed uh, so we have to use the passive voice is more preferable for example this is also the past tense but passive voice is more preferable so example is like that we developed and used a new method for image analysis and described as described below so this you can write but the best way is to write in a passive voice for example, a new, new method was developed and used for the image analysis as detailed below so some of the common mistakes uh, is why you cannot copy paste the protocol for example you have written in your notebook so i incubated it uh, at 37 degree for one hour and process it for process it for measurement that you have written in your but you in in the manuscript uh, mode you don't have to write in that way you're writing up exactly past tense and uh, in a passive voice for example the samples the sample was incubated at 37 degree for one hour and processed for the measurement is a spectrophotometer so spectrophotometer what was the wavelength you have used and also you can write in uh, brackets the uh, this make or company of this spectrophotometer so uh, in a material method sections uh, you can use abbreviations also but uh, every time you have to uh, in in the first occurrence when um, I, I already told you that regarding the abbreviations it depends on the journal guidelines in some journals they mention it just in the start or at the end give the list of abbreviations all that you have used but it is uh, better to, to uh, uh, define the this abbreviation on on its first occurrence for example dna rna i already told you every abbreviation which how my which may be well known for your dna rna uh, sds nacl these are well known i still have to mention it to avoid any confusions in the paper so at the first occurrence for example uh, this dna is 10 times in your paper so first time when from the start of the paper and first time it dna is written at that time you have to write the full deoxyribonucleic acid 
then in bracket DNA, then in later on you can just write DNA, DNA, DNA. So what is the advantage of this first occurrence? For example, some uh, some of the abbreviations that are not well known. For example, for you maybe TEM, SEM, DAPI, it's not well known. So uh, so you cannot every time when you read the paper, you cannot every time go to the abbreviation part and check what is there written, what is DAPI. So then you have to come back and go again and come back. That is not that much convenient. So writing at the first uh, occurrence is I think bad, more convenient so so you are reading first at first you check this my you you have read this uh, DAPI or SEM so so when you know that the SEM is uh, scanning electron microscopy so at the after that you in your mind is the, the, you know that what is SEM so when you keep on reading you don't have to switch back and forth to the abbreviation section so this is much more convenient so you have to consult the journal guidelines for the use of standard units or if there are any units or there how you have to write the units so so you have to go to the journal guidelines so you they are they should be in the italic so every time you have to uh, follow the journal guidelines so materials and methods uh, some of the examples are said directly from the paper for example the regions and antibodies is the material method is a two it is second part one may be the intro one maybe the introduction second is material methods in material method 2.1 or these are subheadings so 2.1 is a reagents and antibodies so the following antibodies were used in the experiment one these are the antibodies this is the catalog number and uh, this is the make so this is the company so every uh, chemical or every antibody that uh, you will be using so you have to mention the catalog number you have to mention the company name everything you have to mention so for example if uh, the uh, if someone wants to replicate it and using them different chemical and if the results are not the same that you you have done or you have reported but if if that person is using some different uh, company uh, chemicals so he can uh, get to know that I have to use this company chemical to get the same level of results and uh, uh, they, they cannot question you why you can they tell you that I'm not getting the results so if they are using some different company there may be the chances that there may be some variations in the results so you have to mention it properly everything what you have used so whenever you do your research so you are using different things or you are sometimes procuring some things from different labs or from your friends so you uh, ask them what uh, if, if you give me this chemical just give me the catalog number in company name so that I can put uh, it in, in my paper it is very important because later on uh, you have you have taken some so some of the sample from your friend or some of your colleague and you at the end you don't know what what company was it what was the catalog number so then you will be in trouble how what to write what to write what catalog number so then most of the you what do you think you you think i will search from uh, the uh, net and i will put some com some random company chemical uh, this catalog number in but this is very dangerous because if someone tries to replicate with that catalog number and it doesn't replicate then it will be the question on your study that you have used you have mentioned this chemical using this chemical this company chemical you have done this uh, experiment but it is my the results are not what when some other group will do results are not the same so it will be question on your people they can report it so be conscious or cautious on these these things right properly what company chemical because there may be the, there may be the company to company variations so another section is but there may be different experiments like cells uh, cell culture treatment and transfection so you have to mention different cell lines that are used by from these are purchased uh, how cells are grown exactly the temperature co2 what is the media what is the media that was used what what is the what was the composition so exactly from where the media was purchased for example uh, here to have written sigma so if you are sub supplemented with it uh, some fbs or antibiotic everything should be 
<clears throat> where from the base antibiotic was purchased how was the transfection carried out or transfection reagent where from it was purchased uh, after transfection when when these cells were harvested uh, post transfection or everything it should you have to write but for example here it is written that uh, post transfection according to manufacturer's pro uh, manufacturer's recommendation so you here he, he the <coughs> author have not mentioned in a detail but here mentioned i have used manufacturer's protocol or so here you can just brief it and uh, mention that i have used manufacturer's protocol now you as you have already mentioned the sigma uh, this uh, i have used this antibiotic or this transfection reagent from thermo so people can go and check the uh, exact this manufacturer's recommendations protocol for this transfection using this uh, transfection reagent so this was all about the material and methods so now uh, in the next lecture it uh, the pending sections or results conclusion so uh, conclusion discussion so in next section we will uh, <clears throat> uh, i will teach you that so uh, we will move ahead with this uh, assignment section so week three assignment <clears throat> so i want you to be active and answer these questions uh, so you can use the chat box or you can directly unmute yourself and answer the questions so the first question is like this which of the following is important important factor to consider when writing a good material method section so i already told you about material method so which of uh, these things you should consider for example good experimental design full details of statistical tests performed Full details of materials used in the study. D parts all of the above. What should be the answer? All of these, sir. Yes, others. Yes, all of these. Uh, yes, all all of these is the answer. So, can you tell me what uh, apart from this good ex experimental design, full details of the state? I already told you materials and materials you have to write properly, statistical tests you have to write properly. What other things uh, you have to consider? You can write or you can just unmute yourself. What other things you should consider when writing the materials and materials section? Statistics and materials is also mentioned. What other? Simple, right? Uh, yes. Observations. Yes, observations. Your research protocols, observations, everything you have to mention. No? Uh, main thing is research protocols that is not mentioned in the question so so explanation for uh, this the answer is all of the above and explanation is the materials and methods section uh, should be detailed and clear enough so that any reader uh, knowledgeable in the basic scientific techniques could replicate the study if she or he wished to do so so it should all that information that needs to be there so that it can be replicated all that information should be there in the materials and methods section second question is that the majority of the papers published in scientific journals contain the section uh, titled as acknowledgement so in which authors uh, recognize the contribution of individual or organization which of the following characteristics should not ideally be included in the acknowledgement section so here are the four points mentioned among these four points which one should not be included in the acknowledgement section for the first one is the sponsor who funded the research project an expert who read uh, through the manuscript and provide critical inputs on the content a colleague who shared some research reagents for the study being uh, written a friend uh, of an author who helped him financially during his elementary school days 
D sir, D is the answer. Hmm. What were others? D is the answer. Yes, why you think so? <clears throat> why you think so, Deepika? <clears throat> you you should speak some of the lines, right? Or the help in elementary school days has nothing to do with the writing the research project. Yes, yes, yes. So whatever the help or whatever uh, the contribution for the paper, it should be the direct contribution. For example. Uh, if you are doing your research in a lab, but this is the elementary school days is the very back. But if in your research group, your colleague, some of you is helping you emotionally and maybe or something like that, but or helping you with your uh, uh, work, but not directly related to this, but that should also not be acknowledged in the. Uh, there should not be any personal acknowledgement. In thesis, you can personally acknowledge. Uh, the person who have emotionally supported your friends, but here in the paper you cannot acknowledge your friends or your colleagues or uh, your parents. So, but in thesis you can acknowledge. So, this is the important difference here uh, in acknowledgement. So, uh, my, the answer is the correct. The A part. Uh, what was the uh, D part? And uh, the explanation is only direct contributions to the study are mentioned in the acknowledgement, sec uh, acknowledgement section, support received several years ago. And uh, not for this work should ideally be included, should not, uh, should, not uh, should not be included in the acknowledgement. So third question is, which one of the following uh, options must be considered by writing? Any type of research proposal. Clearly defining objectives of the proposal, or detailing the results, social impact of the proposal, financial uh, rewards. What should be the answer? A sir, A. Hmm. You have to mention which of the things you have to consider. So clearly defining your objectives. So A is the correct answer for this. So you have to clearly define the objectives of the proposal. So uh, there is no link with uh, more detailing the results or social impact of the proposal or financial reward. That things need not, not to be considered. So which of the following is correct order for a research article? And what is the acronym for the way of writing? Your answer. So method, desert, induction, discussion, what is the order of the research article? So whether the uh, sequence in the article or how we have written it? Uh, this this uh, actually question may confuse you. That's why there's some uh, one more question. So, so, so this, this is the this is for the uh, this is for the research article. Correct order for the research article. Order of a research article. Uh, the B is the correct order of research article, and it is also known that I am RAD. So, introduction, method, result, and discussion. This is the correct order of a research article. And uh, if the question is like that, the following are the sections that are typically included in the research paper introduction, method, result, discussion. Which one of the following options correctly represent the popular sequence of writing the four sections of the paper, however, uh, which may not be the actual order of final manuscript? So, what is the answer? 
Yes, sir. A. Yes, anyone else? So here you have to mention what I was discussing, the writing sequence. Which thing you have to write first, then second, then third, fourth. Yes, sir. And uh, most of, uh, how many of you before uh, joining this uh, session or before joining this course know that you have to write the introduction, you have to write the methodology first. Usually what people do, they will just start from above. Just start from introduction. They struggle a lot of time with the introduction, give a lot of time with the introduction because introduction takes time. So then uh, they become tense that I have written just only small part in these five to six days. How many of you know earlier? I think no one knows you. No one of you was. Yes, sir, I was there. Uh, you was... You was there, but you know this, writing the... No, sir. Uh, initially, I, I start the paper with an introduction, sir. Mm -hmm. uh, when mom, I also used to do this when, before uh, learning this course. So this is this, this is a great help. You Sometimes you try this, so you see how much helpful is writing in this way. So mostly, most of uh, the research scholars, even postdocs or senior... Uh, Scholars, they also write in the this section, introduction method, but that's not the correct. So you try this sometimes when you write your first paper or someone have already written or using some other sequence and now they are writing your second paper. Try this and you see the benefit. So answer is this methods, uh, result section in that order are easier to write than other two sections. Uh, secondly, completing the methods. And then result section help the authors to align the other two sections uh, so as to highlight the importance of the discovery or observation. So it's mentioned there and it is very much helpful. Sixth question is anyone writing the first research paper will find the assignment intimidating and uh, more difficult uh, than the actual work. One advice frequently given to the beginners is to uh, begin writing the simpler section of the research paper. So, as I already mentioned, rather than adhering to the uh, exact order of the research paper, identify uh, the option that, indi that indicates the easier section to write first. So, these are same same questions. So, which section? B. Uh, B. Yes, everyone is agreeing with this. The method is the easier section. So the correct answer is B, methods. Method is the easier section to write in. We might start first with the method. This is the explanation of this, but it is in, in order to write uh, Methods, uh, yeah, methods and results section in that order are easier to write than other two sections. Secondly, uh, completing the method, then the result section helps to authors to align the same explanation. So journals often uh, often ask the authors to provide keywords uh, for their research paper. The reason being, what is the reason of providing, you have to provide the keywords. Keywords help the journals to rank research papers. Keywords help in indexing papers for in easy search. Uh, better keywords increase the impact of the journal. All of these. What? All of these. How? All of these. How better keywords increase the impact factor of the journal? I will show you the you know what is impact factor? No. Impact factor is given to uh, 
for example there are different papers so but paper doesn't have the impact factor general level. for example this is published in the journal acl acs by biomaterial science and engineering impact factor is just the word says impact how much this journal have the impact for example here the impact factor is 5.7 and different journals have a different impact factor so any one of you know some of the good journal jo apne suna hoga are agar isme paper aa gaya to bahut badi baat hai tell me about it bolo बोलो किसी जर्नल का नाम बोलो मुझे जो आपने सुना है कि दिस इज वेरी गुड जर्नल टेल मी सम ऑफ द नेम्स नेचर सर हां फॉर एग्जांपल नेचर इफ आई सर्च नेचर इंपैक्ट फैक्टर यू सी द इंपैक्ट फैक्टर ऑफ नेचर व्हाट इज इट 69.69 so impact factor tells us uh, the impact of the journal so impact factor uh, what is the impact factor so impact factor is a measure of the frequency with which the average articles in the journal has been cited in a particular year so it is used to measure the importance or the rank of a journal by calculating the times of articles in cited so kisi bhi journal mein jo bhi article hoga how many times it is cited uh, in general there are a lot of articles so if this journal is been cited more and more that it has some more importance so some of the good journals for example nature cell science so the more the impact factor it is considered as a good journal so it has more impact but word se pata chalta hai impact so another for example cell cell impact factor cell has a 66 impact factor as a science these are some of the very well known journals 47 impact factor is lower than nature the impact factor is about a particular article or about the no, journal no, no. about about the journal only so impact factor is about the journal only so i'm uh, searching here the journal so this is the journal journal has the impact factor a journal have some rank so article cannot be rank rank so if you uh, your article is accepted in the high journal for example you submit in the 67 and your article gets published in that and if you submit in the five journal impact factor and uh, my my then the article also has some of the value and it, it is the great article I maybe mean, some novel thing in is in that in that only it will be accepted uh, accepted in the nature or science or cell so article has also the value if it is accepted in the great impact factor journal so then the article is good so it if the uh, so it is the there a correlation but impact factor is of the this journal so if the impact factor is good so uh, uh, this uh, what journal is good it so yeah, they are ranked according to impact factor so uh so i will show you something some another thing about impact factor for example this is uh, my a profile so i have got this this citation so sometimes uh when you uh, apply some uh, at some place so they they sometimes ask you write your total impact factor what is the total impact factor that you have published that time is what you have to do for example this biomaterial science impact this is 5 impact 6 impact factor this is i think 10 impact factor this is 15 impact factor uh, now this, this is i think 4 impact factor this is 15 this is i think 3 this is 4 so you have to all add your all the impact factors so by that way you, they they will get an idea of what is the all impact factor and some uh, some of uh, some applications ask what is your highest impact factor so now these are all things about the impact factor 
now impact factor is clear so uh, so better keywords increase the impact factor so keywords doesn't have the link to the directly to the impact factor of the journal so actually in journal i think in year 100 200 in some journals 500 1000 papers are published all together what citations these all 400 journals will get so on the basis of that impact factor will be given to the journal number of or total number of citations but as i already told you if you uh, give some good if you put good keywords so there are chances that you will get some more citation but there is no direct link so this is not directly linked to the uh, this impact factor was general better keyword so answer here is it uh, keywords help in indexing the paper for an easy search but i already told you importance of this title my title my major importance of title is title is used my authors read it and they found it interesting they found that this it should explain all the things then my title uh, my, then they can read the paper and title is also used when you search in pubmed for example uh, if i search anything in google scholar i will show you For example, I searched exosomes and heart failure. You see, every search that I uh, got from this, the title have exosomes, heart failure, exosomes, heart failure, exosomes, heart failure, exosomes, heart failure. So when you search in a search engine, so the search engine gives the results according to the title and according to the keywords. So title has two importances. One, because of the title, you will get the pip. Uh, if you give some of the proper exact words that about your research so it will be in the search uh, because of that uh, because of uh, because of the title but you 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 see uh, you you never see the keywords are there any where keywords mentioned never so here so you can see the keywords i think here it will not be mentioned here, here, here it will be mentioned in this side. Uh, these are the keywords. So here it is mentioned, but outside you cannot much open the paper on the base of keywords, but you open the paper on the base of title. But when you search it, these keywords, what is the role of these keywords? The role of these keywords is that it will have the search engine. If you write some other words here, and those other words are not in your title, but they are in the keywords. Your paper will be in the search because of the keywords. So purpose of the keywords is help in the search. So when you search anything in the search, uh, anything in the go these uh, uh, search engines. So if you have given the same word in your uh, same word in your keywords, and if it is not in the title but it is in the keyword so your article will appear in the search because of the keyword so this is the importance of the keyword so you have to use the proper uh, keywords uh, for for the search uh, for, so that it, it can be searched so this is the answer so another question which one of the following uh, is the most red section of the research article yeah. Yeah, yeah. title yes title is uh, 100 percent decided after that abstract then i think material methods and results will be together during the submission process of the research article uh, publications yeah. will frequently require extensive methodology uh, section as part of the article the reason for this is as follows what is the reason that you have to write the methodology section as an extensive uh, extensively so these journals they ask that to write the in the guidelines 
that I showed you earlier, they write that most of the time extensive, uh, the methodology should be extensive. So the reason is knowledgeable in the approach that was taken uh, to give other researchers the opportunity to repeat experiment and reproduce the finding to recommend uh, the use of particular instrument or chemical. So this is not the case. You, you are not recommending in methodology. But the answer is to give the researchers the opportunity to repeat the experiment and reproduce the finding. So B is the answer. So last question is, uh, assume that the objective of your thesis project was to determine whether or not the substance X, Y, this is the substance uh, that it's matching X, Y, Z helps people with dementia improve their memory and their ability to learn new things. This is the study is a randomized clinical trial and it involved 90 individuals belonging to uh, belonging to the range of Asian nations. The title of the study is the effect of XYZ on patients suffering from dementia in Asian countries. Which one of the following options represent a better keyword uh, combination for the research paper? Option B, sir. Uh, reason? Uh, because all the other keywords are there in the title. Yes, XYZ dementia not in the title, but this uh, memory uh, randomized trial uh, learning ability, it is not in the title. So ma, this is helpful. For example, uh, if there are no keywords, so your article will be searched on the basis of only these uh, on the title for the effect or uh, dementia, Asian countries. So in that case, uh, maybe uh, visibility of your article is less, but, but you in, in the in the keep and in the in the title you cannot put everything in there. For example, you have to working on a memory, it's a randomized trial, you are checking the learning ability. You cannot put everything in the title. Then so in that way it will become too broad and too lengthy. So keywords help in that case. So you are working on the memory, randomized trial and learning ability. Someone search for example, learning ability, memory, randomized trial, your paper will also be in the search even if uh, these words are not in your title. So that is the importance of the keyboard. You understood it now properly? Yes, sir, we have understood. Sir. Hmm. Okay. So this will help you. So will this recording be available? Yes, yes. This, this recording will be available on this YouTube channel. So just take a note down of uh, this. Or uh, what I can do in the chat box, I will... Uh, in the chat box, I will uh, paste the link of my channel. Okay, sir. And you can follow in this recording and all the other recordings will be available. My, they are already available there, sir. Okay, sir. Thank uh, you, sir. I think here is the link. So you can later go and... Uh, check uh, these and you can subscribe to this channel also. It will help me. I don't know uh, in how, in what extent, but. So um, you can uh, check you this, uh, all these I will upload here in, in my YouTube channel. And uh, some other, but what I told you earlier that I will show you some of the tools, but today the time is uh, over, it's already nine. So in next session, I will some of uh, some of those who missed the session. You can check in these videos also, or, or I will show you in the next last session, which is there. So thank you so much for joining. So if you have any queries, so you can ask. No, sir. Thank you, sir. OK, anyone else? So thank you for joining. I, uh, uh, this my, my week four is the last session of uh, this. My, my after week four there will be, there will be one uh, one hour total overall session. So uh, there are two sessions. So I expect I expect you to join that uh, Saturday session first, and later I will let you know what when will be another session.
so thank you for so much for joining today's session i will see you in the next week thank you